Hey guys, Allie Marie here with My Catholic Perspective. Today I wanted to talk about inauthentic content on social media. And while I was thinking about the structure of this video, I was really trying to discern what is the goal of it. Because when I think about inauthentic content on Instagram, on Facebook, anything like that, I just want to complain. I want to say how it is so vain, how it is like incongruent with the faith because we're doing things to please others. We're trying to draw the secular world into uh, the extraordinary form of what is Catholicism, what is Christianity, and basically trying to make it appeal to the general masses in a way that is attractive and um, like clicky almost. So I was really like, well, what is the purpose of this video? Is it just to complain about it, to voice my disdain and my dislike for these perfectly curated Instagram accounts? Or is it for thinking about Christ? Is it thinking, you know, what would Jesus's Instagram account have looked like? What type of content would he have posted? Would he be posting selfies left and right? Would he be focused on only getting the professional pictures done, only posting professional pictures, being sure to put the same filter on every single photo that he posts so that every single photo looks similar? Would he be posting in calligraphy, in crazy pastel colors, or you know whatever branding color he's choosing, would they all be congruent with each other, or would they be in black and white? Times New Roman font. What would Jesus's Instagram page look like? I recently was looking at Stephanie Weinert's page and she had posted recently how she posts pictures of her face. She hates taking selfies and she posts because she knows that people want to look in her eyes. They want to see her face because when she writes what she writes, people want to relate with her. Obviously, I have a public platform. I do my YouTube videos. I have an Instagram account. I have an Etsy shop. Um, and I have to use discernment when I choose what to post, when I choose what I'm going to post, how I'm going to post it. And I can say that I have seen certain influencers come on the scene um, and they've like contacted me for advice initially when they're first getting started out and they've skyrocketed. They have so many followers. And when I look at their page, um, I have a sense that it is not actually inspired by the Holy Spirit and it makes me cringe. One of my spiritual gifts that I've like been told I have is that spirit of discernment, is being able to tell what people's intentions are when they are acting a certain way. And so when I come across an Instagram page, I do feel a sense from the Holy Spirit whether or not the Holy Spirit is actually being involved in the discernment process of how this page is going to look. I'm not going to name names, but I'll say that there are certain pages that attempt to set up a tripod and take candid shots on their front porch or in their home, whatever else, and they're like laughing, their hair is perfectly done. And there's just this knowledge that they took 30 photos, they went back to their phone 30 times to hit that button, they staged themselves and now they're posting it as some sort of thing, the joy that only the Lord can bring. I, <laughs> this whole thing of like, we shall not judge and everything else. Like I don't want to shame anybody and what they do. Um, but I do just want to encourage you that if you have been posting this type of content, if you have been trying to make sure that all of your images match perfectly to consider stopping, to consider thinking, what would Jesus do in this situation? You know, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Would he sit here and take 30 pictures to get the perfect photo of him with the perfect lighting on his face? Or would he take one shot and be done with it and say, this is enough to get my point across. This matches whatever testament I am attempting to share, whatever story I'm going to share here. If you have a shop, I think it's a little bit different. You're actually talking about branding. You're actually talking about like a product and marketing and that's a whole different conversation. I am talking about personal Instagram accounts where you are sharing life, where you are attempting to be yourself and, um, and like sharing family photos, everything else. 
And just consider, you know, what would Jesus do? Jesus wasn't concerned about followers. He really wasn't. People naturally followed him. He didn't have to be careful about what he said. He didn't have to word things just right intentionally. He wasn't sitting there editing and editing. He spoke, he was heard, and then he was followed. He did not have to work at it. He wasn't like, oh no, this is, you know, this is actually what I meant. He does that with parables sometimes. But then you look at John 6 and he's like, no, this is what I'm telling you. Like, this is a hard truth. And this is what I'm saying. I'm not going to water it down for you. I am not going to put a filter on it. This is the truth. And this is what is going to bring you salvation. Right now, there are so many trending quotes and words. Um, I think the thing that prompted this for me was I saw a page post fiat in some calligraphy deal and it felt like an inauthentic post. And I've just seen it so much now that, you know, there are those certain key phrases like totus tus or memento mori that are very powerful. You know, we can meditate on them. They can be substantial. Some people have a richer history with them, but other people see it like me. If I wanted to, I could create some super cute little fiat decal and post it. I like, you can do that, but is it authentic? Is it truly coming from a place of your background? Is it truly coming from a place that is divinely inspired? That's not to say I'm some perfect example of the Holy Spirit. That's not to say that I'm some perfect example of what your Instagram page should look like or what your YouTube channel should look like. I'm not saying that I'm like, you know, the end all be all by any means. I think everything serves a purpose. However, when I start looking at the calligraphy and like attempting to draw on that secular deal, I was raised Protestant and I went to a youth group where they would have movie series and they would show clips of PG-13 or R-rated movies like Anchorman um, and then attempt to draw that into the message because they felt that if they drew secular stuff into the message, people like the kids would relate more. I can tell you that that watered down aspect um, while you're trying to relate, uh, the first time I had ever seen any part of Anchorman was at youth group. And it made me want to watch the whole thing. And it's not a very appropriate show. So when we start <laughs> having things that are secularized that we're trying to draw into, and that's not to say, you know, we are called to focus on what is good and pure and true and beautiful and the lovely, all of those things, Philippians 4, 8, right? Like we're, we're called to focus on those things. And that is why, you know, it can be divinely inspired. It can be your authentic self. You could have been like studying calligraphy since you were young. You could have like done all these things, but, 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 but when it starts coming into play for the sole purpose of gaining followers, when it comes into play, because everybody has different intentions with different pieces, right? Like you can do your hair out of vanity or you can just do it out of like a feeling of self-confidence or out of a request that somebody else has asked you to do it or um, all these different things. There are different, like the intentions behind your actions matter so much. And so I'm not saying that there's a right or wrong way to do things. I just really want to encourage you. Like one of my best, one of my good friends, not best friends, but one of my friends, she makes filters. She has a whole filter deal. Um, and that's like a part of who she is. There is nothing inauthentic about her creating filters for other people to use. It's her shop. It's what she does. She's done photography forever. And that is an authentic piece of who she is. That's not to say that you can't come into that and have the Holy Spirit still be a part of it. But when it is for the sole purpose of gaining followers, that is the biggest piece here. When it is for the sole purpose of gaining followers, that is when the Holy Spirit is not there. That is when you are not putting it in the hands of God. That's, that's when you're not allowing God to just work through who you are as a person. And instead you're saying, I have to take this piece. It's not quite me. It's not me all the way. So, you know, but I'm, I'm going to take it and I'm going to, I'm going to do this. You'll notice on my thumbnails a lot on this YouTube channel, I don't spend a ton of time 
doing thumbnails. I do not sit there. I don't do Photoshop. I don't, you know, it's just not authentically who I am. And in fact, after I'd been doing YouTube for three years, I literally only use the thumbnail that automatically generated. <laughs> and I still typically do. I will typically choose one of the three as the photo that goes into my thumbnail. I remember when I did Vlent in 2018, everyone was talking about thumbnails, how we have to make them more engaging. And I had somebody actually tell me that that was how they felt I branded myself. They actually recognized my videos because I didn't put effort into my thumbnails. And I'm just like, well, that's just because why would I? Like, it's just, that's just who I am. That is like, why would I spend a bunch of time on that? Like, it's the content of the video. If somebody's going to choose whether or not to watch my video based on the thumbnail, like, yes, I should be like trying to witness Christ to as many people as I can, but also like, it's about the content. This isn't about me. It's not about, you know, obviously who I am, my charisma and my personality. And obviously like I'm looking at the camera. So my face and everything else, obviously that plays into how the message is delivered. But ultimately my goal is the content of my words. There's a big part of me, like I've had people request for podcasts. I'm like, why don't I just extract the MP3 audio? or mp4, whatever it is nowadays, from my videos and just post that as a podcast. Then you don't have to have YouTube open. You don't have to have the video running in order to, to hear what I have to say for that day, um, for whatever it's worth. I don't know. I just talk half the time. That's why I struggled with today. I'm like, I really just want to talk about how I hate these Instagram accounts. <laughs> but like, how is that productive to anybody? Because, you know, I can dislike them. I can, you know, have my piece to say about them. But ultimately... Uh, the takeaway that I really wanted for today was just if you are finding yourself posting content that is inauthentic to yourself, if you're finding yourself being like, oh, I don't want to post this because it's not a perfectly filtered photo. It's a little blurry. It's this or that, but you like really like the picture, post it. Don't hold back just because it doesn't match perfectly. You're still going to draw in the people that Christ wants you to witness to. We're all called to simply be ourselves. We're all called to just put ourselves out there, witness the truth, and then like plant that seed and let the Holy Spirit do the rest. So this idea that you have to use a, the same filter on every photo, the idea that you have to use calligraphy, the idea that you have to have all of these pieces in a row, that you have to have this, you know, it's, it really is secularized because when you look at the secular popular Instagram accounts, that's what they look like. The girls who their hair is always done. They are always dressed. All of these things. It is not, that is of this world. We are called to be in this world, but not of it. So yes, you can be on Instagram. Yes, you can post, post till your heart's content. But we are called to not be of this world. And so our Instagram channels should be set apart. And that's not just in the sense of perfectly positioned and perfectly filtered photos of the crucifixes. It's not perfectly, you know, beads over the hand, rosary holding type. I mean, that sure can be a part of it if that is authentically who you are. If that is the calling that you have felt from God, have at it. But when it is for the purpose of gaining followers, when you are posting those photos with the same filters, when you are doing that, I am just like harping on this. And so I really need to stop because, oh, I'm sorry. It really does. Like, I'm telling you, I can feel it when I get to these channels and it makes my heart hurt because it's not authentically from the spirit and it doesn't, you know, effectively cultivate the true sense of community, the true deal that what we're doing here is going to help you get to heaven. What's going on here is going to help you get to heaven. My channel, I'm about offering solutions. I want to help people. I want to offer the insights from my daily life. I am not about, you know, I mean, you know, if you follow me, you know, I don't care what I'm posting. I'll post a photo of me without makeup on. I'll post a blurry picture here. Like, it's not chaos by any means, but like, I'm not concerned about looking like I have to have all these professional pictures. I'm not posting, you know, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Certain people have callings to talk about marriage and everything else. Like, so they're always posting pictures of their wedding. You know, I don't post photos, like professional photos back, like left and right. 
that is still authentically who some other people are. And that's perfectly fine. I just want to encourage you to just be sure that you're seeking the Holy Spirit and what you're posting. <laughs> be sure that you're allowing the Holy Spirit to guide that conversation. Be sure that you're allowing that and that you're not doing it for the purpose of gaining followers, that you're not, um, yeah, that you're not seeking it for that purpose. Ultimately, it is all glory to God. That is what it is all about. Every response should have to do with all glory be to God because he is the one who provides the grace. He is the one who does it all. He is the one who is divine inspiration and we all need to be looking to him. Those are my thoughts for today. I do pray that God grants you the resources that you need to draw closer to him and in turn to those around you. And I pray that you're able to make it a great day. We'll see you again soon.